Today we will learn some basics related to classification. Many organisms are found on earth. All are different from each other in some form or the other. Some organisms such as bacteria are so small that it is necessary to use a microscope to see them. While some organisms such as whales and trees are very large. Different organisms have different body sizes, places of living, ways of obtaining food, etc. In this way, the creatures on earth are full of variations. The diversity found in different organisms of a region is called a biodiversity. There is so much biodiversity on earth that we cannot study each organism independently one after another. It will take too much time. But if we form groups based on different organisms, then these groups can be studied easily and in a short time. Forming groups based on similarities and differences of organisms is called Classification of organism. This is important because by classification of organisms, we can study various organisms easily and systematically. We will find it easy to find similarities and differences among different groups. From this, we can find out how an organism has evolved. It will also help us to know how the geographical distribution of plants and animals takes place. Since ancient times, many attempts have been made to classify organisms. Aristotle classified organisms based on their habitat as land, water, air, etc. But this is not an appropriate method of classification. For example, Various organisms like human, creeping creatures, different plants, etc. live on land, but there are quite a few variations except the place of living. Therefore, classification of organisms based on habitat can be misleading. Another way of classifying organisms is to classify the organism on basis of similar and different characteristics. Characteristics are the visible features of an organism. For example, a specific feature of an organism, such as having five fingers in the hand, is a characteristic. Similarly, specific tasks, such as the ability to run, are also a characteristic. Organisms with similar characteristics are placed in one group for classification. Then, based on other characteristics, subgroups of that group are formed. In this way, groups of organisms can be classified into hierarchies. The next level of hierarchy have all the characteristics that are present in the previous level, but different groups of same level differ from each other in any characteristic. Let us now discuss the characteristics on which we do the classification. Presence or absence of nucleus. Cells of some organisms do not have nucleus. These are called prokaryotes. Organisms that have nuclei in their cells are called eukaryotes. Cells are more efficient by having nucleus and cellular structures. Number of cells in an organism. The body of unicellular organisms such as amoeba is made up of single cell while the body of multicellular organisms is made up of many cells. Both have different body structures. Cells in multicellular organisms become specialized which helps in division of labor in the body. Method of obtaining food Different organisms have different methods of obtaining food. The body composition of organisms that make food themselves 
and those that obtain food from others are different the body of plants develop in terms of making food while the body of animals develops in terms of obtaining food from outside green plants have chlorophyll by which they absorb sunlight and with the help of photosynthesis make their own food animals do not have chlorophyll so they are unable to perform photosynthesis in this way green plants come in one group and different animals including humans and parasites come in another group body organization different organisms have different body organization like simple organisms such as hydra a group of similar type of cells perform all the functions whereas in humans tissues are formed from cells and organs are formed from tissues and specialized organs perform dedicated function classification of organisms can also be done on this basis now let's understand another important aspect of classification classification and evolution the development of characters of an organism in successive generations is called evolution a hierarchy built on the basis of similar characteristics gives an idea of how an organism must have evolved we also find that the body structure of some organisms has not changed significantly whereas other organisms have undergone more changes we call the first type of organisms as primitive or lower organisms whereas the second type of organisms are called advanced or higher organisms keep in mind that these words are not related to progress to remove this confusion we can call the first type of organisms as old organisms and second type of organisms as new organisms the body structure of new organisms is more complex than the body structure of older organisms today we have learned some basics related to classification